Do you know if I can vlog in there? <laughs> Thanks for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. So you've finished the Boulder Dam tour and you're wondering what else there is to do. Well, keep watching and I'll take you to two more stops you gotta see. And then we're gonna head over to Boulder City because there's 10 things you need to check out while you're there. So if you're new to the channel, please think about clicking on that subscribe button down below. Now let's get started with today's video. Our first stop is the Michael Callahan and Pat Tillman Bridge. Access to the bridge is free and there's plenty of parking. It is ADA compliant, so there is a bunch of switchbacks or you can just take the stairs. I think I'll take the stairs. It wasn't too bad, I'd say maybe four flights. You see this rest area. So if you did get winded, you could take a break and then it's just through these portals or through these doorways to get to the bridge. I think it was back in 2005 or 2006, and this bridge hadn't quite spanned yet. That's it for the bridge. As you make your way to the bridge, there are plenty of interpretive and informational signs. So our next stop will be the Lake Mead Overlook, and then we're gonna head over to the Lake Mead Visitor Center. Once you pass the security checkpoint, just stay to your right, and then real quick up on the right is the turn-in for the Lakeview Overlook. Now, there isn't a lot of parking, but there really isn't a lot to see except for Lake Mead and a few informational signs. That was a quick stop here at the Overlook, so our next stop is the Lake Mead Visitor Center. As you head towards the visitor center, don't go straight in. Make sure you wander around. There's signage there that talks about all the flowers, local vegetation in the Lake Mead area. A real important tip is if you're gonna come to Hoover Dam or go to Boulder City, do it in the spring or in the fall. Winter's not bad, but avoid the summer at all costs. The visitor center is open daily from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and is free. The purpose of the visitor center is to assist you in planning your visit or stay at Lake Mead. Now, although it isn't a large facility, it is filled with some very educational information. My favorite display is the huge relief map of Lake Mead. And what visitor center wouldn't be complete without having their own store? This visitor center is probably one of my favorites. The staff is very friendly. You can probably make your way through that visitor center in under an hour, but it is really interesting to see how Hoover Dam and all that electricity feeds Vegas and the surrounding cities. Right next to the visitor center is Historic Railroad Trail. This trail is a 8.2 mile loop that'll take you from this parking area all the way to Hoover Dam. If you plan to hike this trail, it'll take you about four hours to do it. Now there isn't much of an elevation gain. All trails rates it as easy. That's the temperature. It's not a bad day to go for a hike. The trail takes you through five tunnels, 25 feet in diameter. Excuse my blurry finger, but that is the direction of the trail. It weaves its way through the mountain. Our next stop is Hemingway Park. There really isn't anything to do there. I mean, it is just a regular park, but the main difference there is that the bighorn sheep come down from the mountains to either graze, get water, or take a break from the heat. Just to the right of the park is another walking trail where I noticed a bunch of rams sitting in the dirt. Hopefully they don't charge at me.
Next up in Boulder City is the Tom Devlin Monster Museum. This is a special effects museum. I'm gonna put a link to a video that I did last year here with Carly. The museum is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. daily. Price is $20 for adults. Ages six to 12 are $10. Children five and under are free. Our next stop is the Nevada State Railroad Museum run by the Nevada Southern Railway. Right behind me is the Museum Pavilion, which is open daily from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Now it's absolutely free and you can walk around and board some of the engines and some of the cars. Also housed here is the Rail Explorers. I did the Neon Knights tour with Vegas Best Ideas and the VCC. So I'll be sure to put a link to that video down below in the description. It's a fun ride. You get in these pedal cars. It's a two person or four person and you pedal down this track all the way up to the Railroad Pass Casino. I'll put all the information down below along with the video. But now let's go check out the Nevada State Railroad Museum. The train museum offers rides only on the weekends Departure times are at 10 a.m., noon, 2 p.m., and 4 p.m. Now it only costs $10 for adults. Children ages four to 11 are five bucks. Children three and under are free. Advanced purchase of tickets are not required. Now they do have two upgrades. One is you can ride in the caboose for an additional fee, or you can ride up front with the engineer. I haven't done it, but I think I will. This car behind me is home to two model railroads. Now it's only open on the weekends, if they have the staff. That'll end our time here at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. We're gonna head over to the Nature Discovery Trail and Rock Garden at Bootleg Canyon Park. So if you're gonna Google for this place, make sure you put Bootleg Canyon Park. It has some features that I haven't seen anywhere else. Plus, if you brought your youngins with you, take them here and they can run off some of that energy. The Nature Discovery Trail and Rock Garden is closed from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. This is what makes the park so interesting. It's a giant bunny. This trail is pretty easy. It only took me about 35 minutes to hike from the bottom to the top and you end up right there. To be honest, I was here about two weeks ago. So here's some of the sculptures that you can take selfies with. What did you think about the Nature Discovery Trail and Rock Garden? Leave me a comment down below if it's something that you might visit when you come to Boulder City. Now before we head inside the Boulder Dam Hotel, I wanted to talk about the two walking tours that the city offers. The first one is a history tour and the other is a mural and sculpture tour. Both of those have interactive apps. For the history tour, I'm going to put a link down below, but all you need really is a smartphone that has internet access and either a headset or a way to play the audio tracks. The walking tour consists of 11 stops in about a one mile loop. When I did it last, it took me just about an hour to complete. The other walking tour is with the murals and sculptures. So I'll put the PDF map down below so you can see all of them. I think there's about 36 of them. The Boulder Dam Hotel is stop one on the history walking tour. So let's go inside and start the tour. <laughs> You are currently standing in the lobby of the historic Boulder Dam Hotel, which was constructed in 1933 to accommodate dignitaries arriving to witness the marvel of Hoover Dam. The southern gumwood paneled walls surrounding you. The Boulder Dam Hotel is also a working hotel with 21 guest rooms. I checked and the midweek rates start at $92. I didn't see any resort fees, so links to the hotel will be down below in the description. There's also a restaurant that serves breakfast and lunch Wednesdays through Sundays and a cocktail lounge 
with a speakeasy vibe. Inside the hotel is a museum, and that museum is free, but there are areas where you can donate. Once you're done with the Boulder Dam Museum, don't forget to check out the Art Gallery. The Art Gallery is open daily from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now let's head out and finish some of these walking tours. So what did you think of the Dam Hotel and the Dam Museum? Quick tip to make sure you are on the right track if you're doing the history walking tour, there are these little green squares with the QR code and the site number. This is just my opinion, but at most of these historic small downtowns, they have specialty stores. They have antique stores here. They have jewelry shops, comic book shops, toy shops, but they also have one that's kind of unique to Nevada. You are welcome to come in and have fun. The Flying Saucer is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Some of this merchandise you can buy online because they do have a store and I'll be sure to put a link in the description. But some select items they have to come here and purchase. Did you know that they have a bowling alley here in Boulder City? I didn't vlog in there because it was pretty dark and they were having a league going on or a tournament. But if you like to bowl, I'll put a link down below in the description. It's getting late and I figured I should grab something to eat, so why not try Big T's Cantina? They're gonna let me vlog in the back and turn off the music so I don't get demonetized. Wanna get started with anything other than water? No, that'll do. I believe what was recommended was the swordfish tacos. Did you want them fried or grilled? I prefer them grilled. Yeah, that sounds good. And then refried beans or whole beans? Whole beans. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very friendly. <laughs> we'll have it right out for you. All right, thank you. You're Chips. welcome. They are fast here. Chips, salsa. These chips are really good. Nice and crispy. Swordfish tacos are $17. I think you get three of them. Before I keep feeding my face because I'm starving, I usually don't include food in my to-do videos, but since we're in Boulder City, I think it only makes sense. Now, Boulder City has an array of food options. I mean, they do have your usual fast food. Uh, there's a Jack in the Box, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Panda Express, but they also have other kinds of foods that sports bars, pubs, bistros, Mexican food, Japanese food, and Italian. Now, I've also eaten at the Dillinger, loved it. In fact, I'll put a link to that video, along with Toto's Mexican food, which is right before you hit the historic downtown. Let's try the bowl beans. So there's meat and cheese, spices. It has a little kick to it. Now before the tacos get cold. Okay. Cheers. So there's diced onions, lettuce or cabbage, cotija cheese, diced tomatoes, almost like a chipotle mayo. Swordfish is very tender and it's moist, not juicy, not dried out, flaky. Really good choice. I do like the swordfish. Spanish rice or Mexican rice, really good. It's not spicy, but you can taste the spices. Mm. Corn tortillas are lightly grilled. I didn't say that earlier because I really just wanted to eat. I ate all three tacos. They were awesome. Flavor was good, perfect. Everything went well together. You are whenever you're Great. ready, no rush. Well, that's it. It was $17 plus tax, so total bill was 18 bucks. That included the chips and salsa, which some places they charge you for that. Great deal, I'm definitely coming back here. The next time you decide to go to Hoover Dam and you have a vehicle, think about the places that I told you about. The Pat Tillman Bridge, the Lake Mead Overlook, the Lake Mead Visitor Center, Historic Railroad Trail, Hemingway Park, the Railroad Museum, the Nature Discovery Trail, Tom Devlin's Monster Museum, Boulder Dam Hotel Museum, the Two Walks, some of the eclectic stores, and these great little restaurants. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button down below and ring the bell icon. That way you'll be notified 
when I upload new content. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. It was so good I was too full for dessert. Anything for dessert? No. Maybe not. Maybe I'll stop at Grandma Daisy's, get some ice cream, because a meal's not complete without dessert, is it? Yeah.